All right, and welcome back. Uh, in this video, as I said, we're going to be talking about the domains of these trigonometric functions of real numbers. Now, in the last video, I mentioned a little bit, we know that tangent, we can't have an x equals 0 or secant can't have x equals 0, and cosecant and cotangent can't have y equals 0. We want to go into a little bit more depth. We'll talk about each of these functions in turn and talk about what we can and cannot have as an argument of these functions. Now, just a, a quick review. When I say argument, I mean whatever we're plugging in. In this case, it's t, right? t is the argument for all of these functions. I have sine of t. That means I'm plugging in t to the function sine. Okay? So first of all, let's look at sine and cosine. Sine and cosine are just defined as x and y. But what I'm really interested in is, is not what x and y can be, but what t can be for x and y to be defined. Now, I know from our previous discussions about the unit circle, Oh, it looks like my pen's being a little... There we go. We know from our previous discussions about the unit circle that I can have a t. If I have a t starting here, I can go around the circle. And if I go around once, that's 2 pi. Right? Now, in this one rotation, no matter where I go, I have a well-defined x and a well-defined y, don't I? So sine is defined as y, cosine is defined as x. No problem. We don't have any problems here. Now I can keep on going around the circle forever and ever and ever, can't I? So I can obtain all positive real numbers. So then all positive real numbers t are going to be in the domain of this sine and this cosine function. And we also know that if I were to start here and go in the other direction, if I were to go clockwise around here, if I went all the way around and got back to where I started, that would be a measurement of negative 2 pi, wouldn't it? And I can do that in any increment as well, like getting to any real number that I want to as a distance around the circle. Right? So take some time to convince yourself, but it should be fairly easy to see that we have no real problems with sine and cosine. They're defined everywhere, and we're OK. Now, tangent is the first one I'm going to focus on, and the, the other three should follow pretty smoothly after there. What if I have this point here, let's say, um, t equals pi over 2. All right, let's look at t equals pi over 2. We know that that's right here at the top of my unit circle, isn't it? And it has a corresponding terminal point of p where the x-coordinate is 0 and the y-coordinate is 1. So let's take a look at tangent and secant at this value of t. If I look at tangent of pi over 2, that's going to give me, by my definition over here, my y is 1, my x is 0. So I get 1 over 0. And as we briefly discussed in the last video, 1 over 0 is not defined. That does not exist, right? That's not a real number. And, and try to convince yourself of that. This is saying, well, I'm going to divide 1 by 0. Or in other words, how many zeros are there in 1? And you know you can kind of convince yourself, you know, some people would call this infinity, um, but we're going to talk a little bit about infinity uh, once we get into the graphing section in the in the next couple of sections. This is not really infinity. This is this is not defined. And similarly with secant, for the same same reason, um, if I'm looking at secant of pi over two, that's going to be one over x, or in other words, again, one over zero. Right, So I'm not really getting anywhere. This is not defined. So what does this mean? This means that tangent and secant, both tangent and secant, I'm going to write d and e. That means do not exist. These functions are not defined for x equals 0. Right, And that's what I put up here. But this isn't quite useful enough. This isn't why I'm, I'm bringing this topic up. I want to define exactly what values of t are not going to work here. And we know that x equals 0 here at the top of the unit circle. It also equals 0 here at the bottom of the unit circle. Okay. Now the top and the bottom of the unit circle have a distance between them around the unit circle of pi, don't they? I know that a half way around the circle has a total distance of pi. So in other words, tangent and secant do not exist for t equals pi over 2, t equals 3 pi over 2, t equals 5 pi over 2, or I can go in the other direction, t equals 
negative pi over 2, t equals negative 3 pi over 2, etc. And I can document that all down nicely uh, in this form for t equals pi over 2 plus n pi, where n is in the set of integers. We'll talk about this real quick. This means that um, tangent and secant do not exist for t equals pi over 2 plus n pi, where n is any integer. That's what this notation means right here, where n is any integer. So n is 0 gives me pi over 2. If n is 1, that gives me this point down here after I've gone around 3 pi over 2. If n is um, negative 1, that gives me negative pi over 2, etc. So this is a nifty way for me to kind of denote um, all of the infinite values of t in a very precise way for which these functions are not defined. So you can remember tangent and secant are not defined for t equals pi over 2 plus n pi. Now I want to talk similarly about um, our other two functions up here that have these restrictions, cotangent and cosecant co-functions. Okay. Now, of course, it's a little bit different, right? We're not looking at x equals 0 anymore. Cosecant and cotangent raise issues when y equals 0. So let's go ahead and just look at this point right here, t equals 0. This is the easiest point we have to deal with, isn't it? When I have t equals 0, my terminal point p is the same as my initial point. It's just the point 1, 0. So cotangent of 0 that's equal to x over y, or in other words, 1 over 0, just like we had with tangent up at pi over 2. And cosecant of 0 is 1 over y, so it's also equal to 1 over 0, isn't it? So in both cases, these do not exist. And again, we know that they do not exist for y equals 0, but more specifically, we're interested in our domain restriction, right? So we want to note for what values of t do these not exist, so we can avoid those values of t. And these do not exist for t equals 0, right? I can do the same thing I kind of did last time with the pi over 2. So 0, and then it's going to be here, this point, and any increment of 2 pi around here. And also this point on the negative x-axis as well, right? This is my other point where y equals 0. So it's going to be 0 plus n pi again, isn't it? Where n is an element of this double barred z. This notation means n is an element of all, the set of all integers. And I'll use this notation a little bit through this course. Um, this isn't really necessary in this course, but it kind of gets you used to it for those students who are going to go on to higher mathematics courses where this is used quite a bit. Um, so I can reduce this a little bit, right? I wrote t equals 0 plus n pi, but we can write this in a simpler way. t just equals n pi, where n is any integer. And again, just to kind of show you what this means, if n is 0, well, that's my point 0 right here. And I know y equals 0 there. If n equals 1, well, that's my point determined by pi. That's over here. If n equals negative 1, I have negative pi, etc., etc. And you can go ahead and convince yourself that for any integer n, this is going to give me a value of t where cotangent and cosecant are going to be divided by 0, and thus will not exist. All right. Well, that is our um, domain restrictions for these trig functions. And in the next video, we'll talk about some, um, some easy things for remembering what the sign of these trig functions are, kind of similar to what we did with reference numbers in the last unit.